This is Phil Ferguson, and this is a video episode of The Phil Ferguson Show, although in this case it's just still pictures of a trip my wife and I recently took from Orlando, Florida to Allentown slash Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, with a little bit of a side trip uh, to visit some family members, but more than 2,132 miles in five days. Just some basic information. We generally drove with the traffic. We weren't trying to hyper mile. We weren't trying to set any land speed records. We were going with everybody else. Uh, we charged when we wanted to, and we were taking a very conservative approach to this trip. My wife does not like to get below 20% state of charge, although we did a few times. Uh, and we generally don't go over 80% state of charge because the charging rate gets slower. So I wanted to go over some of that. And the first picture we saw was the starting point. And then our first stop was 11 minutes, maybe 12 if you want to round it up. And then 100 miles later, with an average of 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, we were able to charge for just 10 minutes to get to 79%. And our success continued at 3.7 miles uh, per kilowatt hour. And then we stopped at a uh, Bucky's in, um, where was the Bucky's? In uh, South Carolina. So we're making great progress. This charge was, felt like it was a little bit longer than it needed to be, 17, 18 minutes, but it wasn't bad. But our next stop in North Carolina uh, really took a little bit longer than I thought it should have. It took 18 minutes and we only went up to 73% starting from 25. So several minutes longer than it should have been. And we were getting a lower charge rate, in this case, 92 kilowatts per hour. And uh, this car can easily get over 200 kilowatts per hour, anything from 5% to 50% or more. And so we started to notice that we were getting uh, slower charges and our miles per kilowatt hour went down a little bit, probably because the temperatures were falling. The temperatures were in the mid 50s. And then we had my least favorite uh, stop of all at Electrify America. I believe the town is Emporia, Virginia. It was pouring rain, absolutely got drenched. And for whatever reason, I could not get a station to work at this location until I called the 1-800 number and they were kind enough to get me set up and get me going again. Um, but, uh, you know, the charges and the miles, uh, the miles per kilowatt went down from the cold, but what was really starting to bother me was the slow charging. And you can see here again, we were getting 85 kilowatt, and this is now in, uh, Northern Virginia, part of our drive up to, uh, Pennsylvania. And we talked to a few other people that were charging at these chargers and they were having a similar problem. So I thought maybe it was the hardware, the equipment, and we continued on. Uh, and then we started getting really good mileage, uh, even with the cold temperature, in this case, 49 degrees. And so it looked like the temperature in the 50s and maybe even below 50 weren't really hurting our miles per kilowatt hour. It was probably more likely the rain. Our next charge was again, slower than we, we would like it to be, but our range was fantastic. Four miles per kilowatt hour, uh, driving at highway speeds here. You can see, uh, two hours to go 110 miles. So, uh, 55, 60 miles per hour with a little traffic. And again, another stop here with a 69 kilowatt hour rate at 72%, but it, it was generally faster. Uh, we got to 72% in not much time, but that was a little bit of a concern. And then we reached our destination. We were in uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania for a Alan, Con Alan Parsons concert, which I would highly recommend if anyone cares to go to something like that. And uh, we had a little break there and then continued our journey the next day. I happened to watch a couple of videos while my wife was taking a turn to drive and realized that the Ionic 6, which is what I'm driving here in this video, really 
doesn't like the battery to be below 70 degrees for the purposes of high speed charging. So we figured out how to get the uh, battery preconditioning to work. And here is an example. When we're at 35% state of charge, we're getting close to our charger. And that little red coil that you can see just to the right of the 35% in the lower left of the uh, monitor screen of the car shows you that the battery is is being heated up. Here is an example of the screen showing you how much energy that uses. We we saw a lot of 4.4 kilowatt, uh, sometimes up to five. So if you had to heat the battery for an entire hour, you would use four and a half to five kilowatt hour of the battery with 74 kilowatt hour usable. It's not that big of a chunk, but it is something that's noticeable. So uh, if you're getting four or even three uh, miles per kilowatt hour, you're looking at a loss of 12 to 15 on the high end, a shorter, shorter amount of time. Uh, most of ours took half an hour to heat up the battery. You're looking at, you know, losing six to eight miles of range for the ability to be able to charge much faster. And so we arrived at our next charger and now we were getting 135. And I think even before this ending summary, we were getting close to 200 on this charging location. We were able to go from uh, 29% to 72% in 12 minutes. And we continued to experiment with the fast charging as we went along. And then we got to our next stop to visit family. And in the morning, ice. <laughs> ice on the car as a Florida resident. Uh, I've kind of gotten used to not having ice. This is the back window, of course. And then this is a view from inside the car. And we drove to our first stop. It was only 18 miles away and we were kind of low. Uh, I thought we'd get there with 20%. But like I said, we were using the heater to heat up the car battery. And when we started charging, we were getting 163. And then a few minutes later, it went up close to 200 kilowatt uh, as a rate of flow. And that's because we preconditioned the battery. So this was a considerably lower temperature and than the mid fifties where we were getting 85 kilowatt. So here is just above freezing and we were getting 163 to 200 kilowatt simply because of the battery uh, conditioning. So what we then tried to do was to use the routing software of the car to route out our next stops. And here's, you know, the directions to our next stop and the car would automatically precondition if it felt that was what was needed to charge when you got closer to your next location. In the first two occasions, the battery uh, preconditioning stopped when we had 17% of the battery left. I don't know if it was because it was 17% or if it was because the battery was now warm enough. Uh, so we pulled into another location. We were there for uh, 23 minutes and that was from 16% to 84%. That can normally be done in about 18 minutes. Here we were 23 minutes, so it was still a little slower. And you can see in this image here on the top right, 66 kilowatt. but that's at 84% state of battery. Uh, the charge went quite well, just a little bit slower. So this probably added four or five minutes, six minutes uh, to what you would get when the weather was 80 degrees. So not too bad at all. Uh, a little bit of the mapping software in process. And you can see on the far right of the screen, the amount of energy going to precondition the battery for the next stop. And for a couple of these trips, hurt our miles per kilowatt hour, as you would imagine, because we didn't want to spend 30 or 40 minutes at a charger. So we were giving up some of the, some of the range, some of the efficiency to be able to charge faster. Our next stop, we got a little further South and now we got 220 kilowatts. Amazingly, this was an Exxon uh, gas station with Electrify America chargers. So we were able to go from 14 to 84% in 20 minutes. Like I said, part of it was because the day was getting warmer. Part of it was we knew better how to use the battery preconditioning and we had enough time and enough range to do it. And then after this, uh, you know, our next couple of stops went pretty well. Here was a 10 minute stop. 
because we didn't need to fill up too far because we weren't going that far. And our next location was 70 miles. We also did use one Circle K with 360 kilowatt chargers. Could not get the chargers to start. Tried four or five different times. But after a couple of minutes on the phone with the uh, someone at Circle K, and the, the 1-800 number here was on the sticker, uh, they were able to initiate the charge, I guess kind of manually, remotely for us. And the charging went fine. And because of the inconvenience, Circle K said that this charging session would be free. So that was very nice. Uh, our next stop was another Electrify America. And we're doing well, moving further south, now getting 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Temperature in the low 60s. No more battery preconditioning necessary. And here we were. Uh, I think this uh, location was a total of uh, 12 or 14 minutes, not the nine shown on the screen. And then we got to um, Savannah, Georgia. Again, temperature in the 60s. Uh, got a charge there. Just 13 minutes to get to 76%. And we made one more stop that I didn't take any pictures for outside of Jacksonville, Florida, because that was our last stop. And I was tired of taking pictures. And then we were able to get all the way back to our house in the Orlando area. So the quick recap, of course, is the total thing was 2,132 miles. We did stop 16 times over five days. So about three per day, um, 450 miles, I guess on average per day, total time charging approximately 251 minutes. So that's about four hours. So about 40 minutes a day. Uh, two hours for each drive, and on average, 15 to 16 minutes per each charge. That probably could have been a little slower if we weren't in the cold weather and if I had figured out battery preconditioning a little earlier. And again, this is us being very conservative because some people might be bothered with the 16 stops. But if you're driving a gasoline car that gets 400 miles per gallon, you would have to stop four or five times anyway. And we also had to stop to use the restroom. We also had to stop to eat. So the total time uh, stopped, uh, like I said, four hours. If you were driving a gasoline car, still stop to eat, still stop to use the bathroom, stretch your legs. Maybe uh, you could do that in two to three hours. So this might have added an hour or more of time uh, charging the car over a five day period. So, you know, 12 to 15 minutes extra per day, really close to parity driving a gasoline car on the way North. I had found all of the high speed chargers, everything over 150 kilowatt. And then we would just stop and charge, use the bathroom, get a snack, eat a fast food restaurant and then look where we wanted to go next, taking into account how far we had to go. Occasionally there was a few gaps. We also strategically avoided stopping in large towns because they can be difficult to navigate and uh, really preferred Walmarts that were really close to the highway, Circle K, the one stop was right off the highway. And the pilot flying J's of course are right off the exit. So near time to get off the interstate into the uh, Circle K or yeah, Circle K Flying J pilots are, are all about one to three minutes. Um, the Pilot Flying J is still my favorite. Most of them are covered, except for the one that I got soaked at. Uh, that was the Electrify America actually. But the Pilot, pilot Flying J's, you pull in. If you have it all set up with your car, I think they call it Charge Connect Plus or something like that. You just pull up, you grab the handle off of the machine, you plug it into the car, the car and the machine talk to each other, and boom, you start charging. As soon as you know that that's happening, you go inside and do whatever you've got to do, come out, map to your next destination, and by then, you're probably ready to go And in a high-speed charging car like this. So hopefully that helps. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll try to do what I can to answer them. Thanks for watching.